All right, guys, welcome back to the Out of the Park Baseball 19 Let's Play. We are here. It is draft day, so we're going to go through the draft, but first we're going to review how everyone is doing so far. And um, we had a fantastic start to the season. We really did, but if you look at our record, we're 24 and 31. That's not very good. What happened? Well, we are just right now in one of the worst skids just ever. <laughs> It's, it's been so dire. If we go to these standings right here, we've lost 12 games in a row. 12 games ago, we were 24-19. and 19. We were tied for the division lead, and then it's just all... We forgot how to play baseball, and um, when you're a baseball team, I find that to be bad when you forget how to swing or throw. Throw the baseball is also important, and catch, too. Catch, too, is also important. There's a lot of things involving the baseball, and we don't know how to do any of them right now. Um, as for the individual players on the team, Jimenez is up. He is struggling, but um, I'm looking at his numbers right here. Uh, his BABIP is low, but even then, uh, very much struggling. Uh, incidentally enough, uh, Rutherford's still doing pretty good in AAA, so it's quite possible that Rutherford could take him in as his spot in the lineup for now. Um, so I'll go through everyone real quick. Maurer is doing Joe Maurer things and getting on base. That's exactly what we wanted. Uh, Moncada is doing well enough. I'd like, I feel like he could be doing just a little bit better right now, but it'd be hard to complain. Uh, Swanson right now, you know, the wins above replacement look, are projected to be about average for the year, which is good because his OPS plus is so low. That means he's playing pretty good defense at third base like we wanted. Uh, if his bat picks up, he could become a very productive player for us. But until now, uh, it's just a little disappointing. Souza is doing about what I expected and about what I wanted him to. He's on pace to hit 38 home runs. He's been hitting cleanup for us. Um, yeah, I mean, these are very Stephen Souza numbers, so... Uh, you know, part to complain about what he's done for us so far. Castellanos was traded. I decided to trade him for a just kind of a random uh, AAA guy uh, to make room for Jimenez and eventually Rutherford. That was the decision I made. I decided to keep Souza. Delmonico's picking up about where he left last year, putting up similar numbers. He's slugging a lot more. Uh, the fact of the matter is he's hit nine home runs in only 38 games, so that's uh, quite good. And he seems to be taking to first base well. Him and as we talked about, Castillo doing uh, worse than last year, uh, at least in terms of his power numbers. We will see whether we pick up that final option on his contract at the end of the year. Uh, Almora has been hurt, but when he's been playing, um, he's been... Almora only missed like a week. But when he's been playing, he's actually had a fantastic season so far. Probably been our best player. Um... Given us the defense we need in center field, and the bat has been there for him. Uh, the good news about someone like Almora is even when the bat starts to fail, that defense will always be a very solid baseline for him. Hechevarria is doing exactly what I wanted him to. He's just kind of hitting ant, and he's playing the good defense, and he's turning into, out to be a pretty average starter, which for $1 million, uh, a year is uh, not something I'm going to be complaining about. Uh, pitching, uh, so I called up this guy, Jace Fry. I should go ahead and put him in middle relief. Uh, Carlos Rodon has lost his spot in the rotation, and I'm ch kind of trying to do this thing where I use him as a stopper slash long reliever. It's weird. Um, his stuff is good. He's not going to be happy to be in the um, bullpen, but he was just he was just having a bad he was having a bad year, and um, hopefully, if he can get together in the bullpen for a bit, he can make his way back into the rotation. Taking his spot and who has someone who's earned it for sure is uh, Nick Pavetta. Pavetta is pitching well. In fact, the whole um, rotation isn't too bad to be honest with you guys. It's hard to say. Most of these guys don't have that many innings, but um, if I had to pick sort of an MVP of the uh, of, of sort of everyone right now, I would have to go with. Um, uh, overall, I would say I would have to like Sonny Gray has pitched. Uh, decently well. He, he's come back from his injury, and I, I feel like he can put together a good year still. So uh, glad to have him. Hopefully he can uh, pitch just a little bit better, but uh, hard to complain about uh, this rotation. It honestly hasn't been too bad. Um, I see we're 10th in starters ERA, but um, all things considered, uh, we still have Giolito out. Zach Birdie also got hurt in the... Uh, I'll show you guys bullpen too real quick. In the bullpen, Jake Diekman's, uh 
been pretty key for us, no doubt about that. You can see his ERA is four, but uh, those peripherals with his Babbitt, he's gonna he's gonna be able to turn this into a really solid season for us, I think. So um, yeah, that's kind of where we stand right now. It's let's go do the prospects, shall we? Um, oh well, before I do that, um, well I'll show you guys when I get to that list. Yeah, so I, I made a I made a couple moves. That, uh, one of them was the Castellanos trade, and the other one I will show you guys now. So um, we'll start with him. So this is Sandy Martinez, uh, newly acquired in a trade with the Diamondbacks uh, last April. The trade that I decided to do was I sent him and relief pitcher Rex Brothers, who was taken to Arizona quite well. Uh, good for him. And I also sent Luis Robert. I just didn't feel like Robert. These, these numbers don't excite me in any way, and it just doesn't look like he's going to make it happen in game. Whereas Martinez is a, a young catching prospect who, uh, you know, maybe he'll become something someday. So that's him. Uh, Montoya we talked about. He's an international prospect. I mean, in the, he's in the international complex, so not much to say there. Um, I don't believe any of these rookie ball players will have started their years yet. Blaze Alexander is off to a very solid start in A-ball. I must say he's... he's Jock, he's he's jonesing for a promotion right now. I'm not going to quite give it to him, um, but he is doing the thing where you get on base, and that's what he's kind of all about. His eye is, has actually improved. Um, this is a guy I'm really excited about for a ninth-round pick. We'll just see what he can do, but um, it's going to be a couple of years before we see him in the majors, but I mean, maybe not. I mean, this guy's 19. He's in single A. He's, he could... He's probably going to end up in double A at some point this year, so maybe sooner rather than later we see um, we see uh, Blaze Alexander. Hell of a name, too, by the way. I think that really helps his case. Uh, Michael Basica, he has thrown 37 innings in eight ball. Uh, it hasn't been great. James Bell in eight ball, hitting not great. I'm, this is my first time checking in on these guys, so... Um, now, uh, Trevor Cad having a rough one. Um, his ratings suggest that, like, his his, ba his bang ratings, I, I expect him to um, figure it out and kind of hold his own at this level. So we'll give, we give these guys a little more time. Uh, Alec Thomas, uh, I mean, his, his war is positive, that's a plus, but, uh, and his on-base percentage is, is pretty average. Uh, but besides that, got, got a bit of a ways to go. Also, his, um, uh, his overall projections down, but actually these stats still look fine to me, so uh, I'm not too worried about that. Ian Clarkin, um, is it time to give up on the Ian Clarkin on the list thing? Uh, yeah, it, it probably is with, with his age, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to enable AI demotion and pre-motion and remove him from the list. AI can do with him as he pleases now. Uh, we have a lot of prospects, so keeping that list tight is something uh, that's gonna help because we can focus on the real deal guys. Let's see, Robert we can remove because he's no longer with us. Luis Gonzalez, the 23 year old prospect I told you guys about. Uh, he's he's still just he's still an A plus ball and he's struggling, but it's you know early days, early days in the season. Uh, we don't have anyone in Double A right now. That's funny. Spencer Adams, uh, not pitching great in Triple A. Dane Dunning. Not pitching great in AAA. I'm noticing a um, pattern here. Joshua Kimmy. Uh, okay, well, he's hitting pretty well in AAA. I mean, not not a star by any means, but that's good. Rutherford, who I talked about, he's you know he's jockeying for a position. By the time I cut to the All-Star break, he could very well be on the team. It just depends on how a few things end up with Jimenez and Souza. Those are the guys that are kind of in his way right now. And also Al Mora, too. Um, his range has gone up insane. Wow, uh, it's a lot higher. Then um, I feel like it was like 65 or something. He, this is a guy, I thought he was more of a corner outfield type. Nope, he's, done, he's a legit center fielder, and that really helps his case a lot because that means he's going to be playing a premium position. Uh, that's tricky. I don't know what I'm going to do um, with this Almora situation, and that maybe means Almora gets moved at the deadline, uh, for example. There's a lot of ways to, to interpret uh, this new information, but that's really cool. Uh, happy to have Blake Rutherford in the system, and actually um, you can see he did debut... Reyes had his injury, and um, we brought him up, and he did uh, actually quite well, but we still wanted to give him a little bit more time in AAA. This was just more of a cup of coffee just to see, and uh, yeah, but I, th I really think Rutherford, I really think that switch for Jimenez is coming, and, and but I'm just going to give Jimenez just a little more time, just a little more time to see if he can figure it out. Uh, let's see here, uh, Soto, 
is being used as a reliever in AAA right now. He is pitching uh, not great. <laughs> and uh, Zach Birdie got hurt. We talked about that. Jimenez, like I said, struggling. Babip not quite there. He's The ratings are so good, I just want to give him a little more time. So that's where we stand with him right now. So with that out of the way, now we know the team. Now we know how everybody's doing. Let us get into the draft, because I believe we will have a pretty high draft pick. And we'll be picking second. Um, one thing to keep in mind is our budget is low, so I will be trying to make sure I get guys at slot or below. I'm not going to shell out a lot of money for uh, expensive prospects who have big demands. So let's go for it. All right, guys, this first pick is going to be Shea Langoliers, the catcher out of Baylor. Uh, not the typical pick I would make because his work ethic is only normal, but I can overlook that because he is a college player, so his um, sort of general floor and chances of succeeding are, are, are a little bit higher. Um, because of this, he uh, he's just the best player in the draft class. <laughs> there's, there's really not much of a way around it. A really good hitting and really good fielding uh, catcher. Hard to come up with any sort of criticism besides uh, not having a high work ethic. So, um, And also he just wants a slot, so uh, that's pretty key. So we are going to go with Langoliers, and he will be our first pick, and he will be drafted second overall in this draft. So I will see you in round two. All right, here in the second round, picking. This is the first pick of the second round. And... Um, we are going to go with Tim Kate, the left-handed pitching prospect. He is also a college prospect, so that's interesting. Last time it was pretty much all high schoolers. Um, but yeah, he uh, just looks, again, like a guy with a really high floor. I like that his intelligence is high. That means that maybe even he develops a fourth pitch, but uh, this changeup is already at 45, so you can be pretty confident that he'll develop it. I love the potential 75 curveball. That's fantastic. Uh, 60 stuff potential, 55 movement potential, 60 control potential, that's awesome. Uh, 50 stamina is fine. I like the fact that he's a lefty. like the fact that he's a college arm. Uh, like the fact that he would go for slot. So for that reason, well, for those many reasons, I will be going with Tim Kate in round two. All right, I am here in the third round. It's another college player this time. The quality of the draft class is, has kind of dropped off significantly, so I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with these, this fourth and fifth pick. But as of right now, I'm giving it the third pick, at least, to Alex McKenna. He is a college outfielder. Uh, projects could play center field, could play elsewhere. Uh, I like that he has 60 contact potential. That's what kind of drew my eye. And, uh, yeah, not a guy. I am super overwhelmed by it, but he seemed like a solid enough player, so it will be him that we draft in the third round. All right, I am here in the fourth round, and I am here with a guy that I almost drafted in the third round, and that is high schooler Kate Dowdy. Um, I like his uh, defensive ratings. Those stand out to me. The offensive stuff just looks like it could be okay, but the fact that he is high work ethic mean gives him a solid chance of fulfilling his potential as a whole signability wise for us he is extremely hard so we will actually just sort of see uh what he wants from us <laughs> but yes he is who we will be going with in the fourth round all right and now to round out all the draft picks i will be actually showing um we will go with for our fifth rounder john baker uh, he His movement potential isn't great, but everything else looks solid. I like sort of the repertoire, uh, the fastball, the curveball, the slider, all highly rated, the changeup. I have my doubts about, but even then, he's still got three-plus pitches potentially. He's also high intelligence, so uh, 60 stamina, out of ball state. Uh, yeah, seems like he could just be all right for a fifth rounder, so let's go for it. All right, that will do it for all the draft picks I'm going to show. Now I'm, I will do the next 10 rounds, so that'll mean I do 15 total, but I will be doing those off screen, and if any of those guys turn out to be prospects, don't worry, they will pop up on our prospects list at some point. I always keep an eye on them. So uh, until then, I will see you guys at the All-Star break. All right, our owner has just shot us his mid-season review of goals. Team record, he is... Uh, 
all right with us not sucking. We're currently 38 and 42. Upgrade position. He's he's thankful for Swanson, although he would like uh, a little bit more. Increased attendance. He sees the increase, but would still like, you guessed it, a little bit more. Um, and then as far as the increasing of profit, he sees the uh, improvement, but he would like to see a little bit more. So overall, I would say that uh, White Sox owner Jerry Reinsdorf, he's a bit like the father that you can never quite uh, make proud of you. Uh, you're getting there, you're, you're getting there, and um, you're not really upsetting him, but you're just waiting for him to just, just tap you on the shoulder one day and say, son, I'm truly proud of you. I think that's who Jerry Reinsdorf is. All right, we are here at the All-Star break. Here are your rosters. We are currently 42 and 53. That's good enough for tied for third in the division, which Cleveland leads. Uh, by a fair margin. Here are your rosters for the American League. I'm scanning with my eyeballs to see who made it. I imagine Al Moore made it. Uh, yes, he did. Did we have anyone else who made it, I guess would be the question. And it would appear the answer is no, unless I haven't seen anyone. Uh, who's having a monster year in the American League here? Uh, certainly uh, Devers is having a, a monster year. Good for him. Uh, Lindor is having a monster year. That should not be surprising to anyone who's ever played this game. Uh, Bryce Harper, who is now signed with the Orioles, is having a good, good time. Uh, who else kind of stands out here? Mm, uh, and then Severino will be your all-star game starter. He is yep, also having a fantastic year. National League right now. Uh, Clayton Kershaw doing his thing. But it's Syndergaard, who is, wow, Syndergaard's having a fantastic year, and he will be starting the All-Star game. Um, Joey Votto doing his thing still. Definitely, if there was any doubt, you know, he's on the um, a hell of a trajectory, at least in this game. Easy Hall of Famer at this point, with uh, a very good 2018 behind him, and now also a very good 2019. Uh, who else would I like to highlight? Corey Seager. Yeah, Corey Seager... 26 home runs. Uh, get well soon, Corey. Uh, the Ronald made it. That's good. And uh, I'm, yeah, Monty Harrison, who is the uh, who's a Marlins prospect in real life now. I'm not sure if he's in the majors, um, but wow, he's having quite the year. Good for him. Okay, so that's your uh, All Star Game rosters. I will catch you guys at the trade deadline. And all right, just before we get to the trade deadline, I, I got a comment. Someone is a, a friend of this guy or something like that. He's like a family friend. I can't remember the context, but his name is Sam Dexter. He uh, was in the White Sox organization. Yes, he was drafted by the White Sox in the 23rd round. Um, is no longer with them in real life, and he wanted me to re-sign him. But um, actually, he has uh, he's now found his way into the Giants organization and is in double-A. Um, so I'm not going to interfere with him. But um, yeah, I will. what I will actually do is I will um, add him to our prospect shortlist, and uh, we can at least keep an eye on him and, and follow his exploits. And maybe if he you know, ends up not being with them, we, we, we can sign him to a minor league deal. I have no problem with that. All right, now let's get to the actual trade deadline. All right, well, I do have one move right at the deadline for you guys. Um, so Mike Ford is a player that I traded for uh, not very long ago, I sent Castellanos for him, uh, promoted him to the majors for a bit to cover for Joe Maurer's injury. Right now I'd like to give Okimi, who is the power-hitting guy we acquired from the Red Sox, a shot in the team. So I'm going to send away Mike Ford. Uh, and I'm also going to send away Luke Mann, who was our fifth-round pick last year. Uh, I tried to convert him from a pitcher to a third baseman. It just hasn't really worked out for him at all. And um, who will be receiving is uh, Sandy Alcantara, who is a currently relief slash starting pitching prospect in the Marlins organization right now. As you can see, he's made the majors. He's not pitching well. Um, we're going to give him a shot in the bullpen with us. Maybe a change of scenery will help. We're also going to receive uh, Will D. Smith, who's a 24-year-old catcher in the uh, who's in AAA right now. And uh, I like his defense. I do like his defense. Um, so that's going to be the deal that we make. Uh, like I said, I wanted to find something maybe cool for uh, Almora. I didn't like what the teams were offering. I, I felt like they were lowballing me a bit. So um, to counteract that, actually, what I what I've gone ahead and done is uh, I 
have promoted Rutherford, and um, I'm going to uh, be playing. Oops, did I fuck that up? What did I do wrong? Um, I'm looking here, fellas. What did I do? Oh, I removed my DH. Um, yeah, because I need to promote Okimi, duh. Uh, <laughs> uh, Jesus. Anyway, you should probably seen it already, but uh, I have gone ahead and promoted Rutherford. He's going to play left uh, to close out the year. Uh, Jimenez was just having a hard go at it, so we're going to leave him in AAA and maybe give him a shot at it next year. Uh, but Okimi will be our DH from here on out. Uh, one good thing about Okimi is the fact that he is um, very much capable of hitting lefties, even though he himself is a lefty. So that is one thing I do like about him. Uh, but the avoid case is rough. Uh, I'd like to at least bring your attention to Nolan Fontana. He has only had 67 plate appearances all year and started 10 games as a utility outfielder of sorts, but uh, 500 OBP. Uh, yes, please. But uh, yeah, Hedgefria has been doing well. Swanson's been getting it together too. He's on pace for a 3.8 win season. So uh, this team has some talent. Delbonico is sucking right now. But um, yeah, this team, this team has talent and uh, we will see if they can uh, work it out or not. So that is going to do it for the mid-season episode, I guess. Uh, I, will, I mean, well, I'll show you guys the pitching real quick. Uh, Gilito came back. Carson Fulmer, we sent back down to AAA. And then I do need to promote one more reliever. Um, actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put Fulmer Fulmer in the pen. He's not going to be happy about that, but uh, uh, it's just you got to do what you got to do, man. We have a lot of starting pitch hitters in the pen right now. Um, yeah, Birdie's hurt right now, and, um, not, sorry, is Birdie hurt right now? No, I'm full of shit. It's, uh, Funkhauser who's hurt right now. So, um, slim pickings in the bullpen. It's a still very much a slap-together, work-in-progress pitching staff. Um, so yeah, that'll actually do it for the episode. Um, and I will see you guys at the end of the season in the next episode. So thank you for sticking with me through this whole mid-season. And I uh, hope you guys are enjoying the uh, series so far.